A few people have recently asked me how I've made the trees that will appear on my layout. This video I'm going to run through how these trees were made from the basic wire structure, adding over bark and then uh, fine branches and leaves. There are many different ways to make trees, so this is by no means the perfect or right way, but uh, it's just the one that I use. The basic equipment that you're going to need to build the armature is simply some florist wire. There are various types, I've got the silver one on the left and then some of the green wire that is uh, more commonly seen on the right hand side. I've also got some pliers to help with twisting of the thicker wire which uh, you might find very useful. For this tree I use a, a whole pack of wire on the right to create the main trunk. I start by folding it in half and twisting the bottom which gives uh, the main root structure of the tree. By modelling the root structure, it allows you to do a couple of things. Uh, it allows you to obviously show any roots that may be above the ground, which is quite common for certain types of trees. It also allows you to uh, use it as a stand whilst uh, building the later stages of the tree. Once you've got the loop at the bottom of the tree, you can start to twist the main trunk. You already need to start thinking about how you want your tree to look, uh, where you want the first branches to come off and, uh, and various things like that when you start to twist. But Generally, most trees will have a length of uh, trunk before the first branches divulge from it. So once you've done a bit of twisting, you'll end up with something that looks like this. As you can see, I've got a main branch that comes off of the uh, trunk. The next step, for me at least, is to start opening out the root structure. You can start this by taking single wires, or a couple if you want to, and start twisting them individually. Take each wire in turn and repeat the process. You'll be able to fan them out slightly to get a uh, fairly uniform um, dispersion of the roots around the bottom of the tree. Obviously, in nature, nothing is completely uniform, so don't worry too much about being perfect. And where possible, uh, try and find some sort of diagram online to keep your modelling as uh, realistic and uh, prototypical as possible. Depending on how tightly you've twisted the trunk or the uh, main branches, you might find at this stage that uh, things start to come undone a little bit, which is happening here. It's an easy way to fix this. You just take a pair of pliers and uh, give the branches and the trunk a further twist. When it's uh, twisted out, you'll uh, have the end of the branch and the top of the trunk looking like this. But it starts to kind of build up a bit of a branch structure anyway, so that's not too much of a problem. Keep twisting the uh, root wires until they're all done. Uh, you might find that they are at slightly different heights so you can start to adjust those to generally get kind of a, a fairly flat bottom. Once that's complete you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Again each tree will be totally different and if you're copying uh, particular reference picture it may look entirely different to this but uh, this is basic tree structure with the roots done. Next thing to do is look at the branches. The next step is to start with the main branches. It's a simple case of uh, grabbing the pliers and start twisting the wire. Um, on this tree I'm not going to be using any of this wire to form the smaller branch structures so I can kind of twist right the way to the end and then just adjust the uh, end branches to kind of fan out a little bit. One thing to keep in mind when uh, making trees is generally um, from above they all look fairly circular and that's because the uh, branches and leaves do their best to find the light so I keep checking to make sure that generally I'm going to be keeping a, a circular um, pattern from above. The next step I take is to start working with some uh, smaller gauge wire. This uh, silver wire was uh, used uh, but it could be any colour, it just depends on what you've got in stock. For this tree I wanted quite a thick trunk so I start by wrapping the wire around the trunk to give it a little bit more bulk. You can use uh, later steps uh, to do this if you want to but I just decided that it would be good to kind of uh, wrap some wire around it. As you can see it starts to really thicken up the base of the tree which uh, for this old oak is perfect for what I'm looking for. The next job using the same wire is to create the branches. I take four or five wires and in a very similar way to the trunk I start by wrapping them around and giving them a twist. This creates a branch that is going to be linked to the uh, trunk. Once you're happy with how that's connected to the trunk you can start twisting the wire. 
as this wire is thinner, I'm going to be using it to make smaller branches up the tree. So I need to think about that a little bit when I'm twisting. I grab the point where I want the first uh, branches to deviate from this main branch and twist from there. It will leave the branches uh, to the outside of that free to be moved in any way you like, whilst creating a nice strong branch structure below that. As before, I start to split out the branches into smaller strands, at least two uh, wires, but uh, to start with more. So I'll be using perhaps three, four or five different wires to create each branch from it. A little word to the wires, whilst uh, doing these trees is a lot of fun, the uh, wire is quite sharp and you'll end up getting lots of little cuts and pricks on your fingers. By doubling up the wire um, on itself, you can start to twist uh, with a, a complete loop at the end. This is going to be what makes up the finer branches uh, towards the end. So as you get to each or as many as you'd like to uh, branch at the end, uh, fold it over, create a loop and twist up. Repeat this process over and over again until you've got a branch structure that you're happy with. The one on the left is uh, one that I've obviously done um, and the one on the right is still to be done. Then it's a case of clipping each loop to allow two branches at the end of each of the main branches. There are various places you can clip these loops and they will give you um, different results. I tend to try and keep them as short as possible. Uh, if I do keep them longer, they'll need to be bent out a little bit to make them look less circular, which isn't a, a pattern that's found very often in nature when looking at pictures of trees. You need to take the exact same step with the roots as well, so I take this time to do it. Again, with the roots, you can clip uh, in various ways, but if you're keeping them longer, you can continue to twist them uh, individually. The thicker gauge wire allows for this uh, to look quite effective. When it's done, we'll have something that looks like this. The root structure is quite realistic, and the uh, branch structure on the right-hand side of this image is also something that's quite pleasing. You just need to repeat the same steps on the right-hand side on the left here. You'll need to lash some more wire to the branches. You can do that by uh, wrapping around the branches and at the ends creating a more fine branch structure. When you're complete, you'll have something that looks like this. You just need to keep working and doing the same techniques until you come up with something that you're happy with, either that it looks close to the picture that you're following or something that uh, resembles a tree in your head, depending on how you're doing it. The next step you need to take is to add the bark structure. This is a two-part process and the first part involves some uh, liquid latex rubber and an old paintbrush. You simply just need to cover the whole tree in liquid latex. It's quite a runny material and at first we'll uh, run through so don't put too much on at first and, and work in kind of light coats. You're doing this for a few reasons. First of all to start to fill in the gap between the wire and take some of that wire look away from your tree. The other thing that you'll be doing is providing a surface that the other bark texture that we'll be using next can grip onto. It's important to use an old brush here as the liquid latex dries quite quickly and once it dries within your paintbrush will make it almost useless. Work your way up the whole tree from the trunk uh, up to the finer branches at the top. Make sure that you don't uh, leave any kind of uh, droplets uh, that you've just seen there on the uh, ends of the small branches as they will dry hard and then uh, will look particularly unrealistic. Take your time um, and don't worry if uh, you look like you're kind of uh, leaking liquid latex out the bottom of your uh, tree, that's uh, perfectly normal. Just be careful on what surface you use. In fact, one of the bonuses of using the uh, liquid latex is uh, you get to peel it off your surfaces afterwards. It's like at school when you had uh, PVA glue on something and you got to peel it off, but a million times better. Once the liquid latex has dried, you're ready for the second part of the bark process. Take some grey grout and some PVA glue, mix these together and you'll create a brown grey sticky paste that you can apply to the tree and uh, that will give a great bark texture. It will also dry rock hard so it gives your tree some strength. This is the sort of consistency that you should be going for, uh, a real kind of gloopy paste. If you're not happy or want it a little bit thicker, by all means add some extra grout. If you want to thin down the mixture, you can add water as well. It's now just a case of painting the tree with this mixture. It will take a few coats. Um, remember as well, when you're doing this, you're trying to create the final shape of the tree. So the first coat you should really be aiming to fill in any further gaps in the kind of uh, wire structure to try and remove as much of that as possible, but also start to thicken up areas that you think could do with it or 
uh, adding uh, paste to fill gaps that don't look quite right. You can add a little extra texture by taking some of the unmixed grout and adding it directly to the bark on the tree. This gives a nice difference, uh, especially on the kind of the trunks of the tree where moss and things like that might have grown. Further up the tree you go, the finer the work gets. Use less and less paste. Um, it can obviously be done in more than one coat, but you're just looking to basically cover the wire uh, and not really add any more texture to it at this stage. When the paste dries, it goes a nice dark brown colour and you can start to see uh, already it's very hard uh, to the touch. You're going to need multiple coats of this, so just keep going until you're happy with the final results. You're trying to disguise as much of the wire as you can whilst also shaping the tree to something that looks close to what you're modelling. The next step is going to be to add the smaller branches. I'm going to be using seafoam to do this. I've got some super glue and super glue activator to uh, adhere the seafoam to the main branch structure and some small scissors to cut up the seafoam as required. You only need a very small amount of super glue and then you'll be able to pl place uh, the seafoam onto this and uh, hold in place with the super glue activator. It's quite fiddly work at times but uh, it, the, the details of it kind of get covered up a little bit towards the end anyway so don't worry if you're not entirely neat. Again, just go from reference pictures, but you're looking for something like this, which represents a kind of finer branch structure of a tree. Then all you need to do is keep building up, uh, take it probably one branch at a time, and you start to kind of get something that looks uh, a lot more like a tree. Next step is to prime the tree. Um, I'm using some gray primer here. I'm also gonna add uh, a layer of kind of dark brown, I think it's camouflage is the color. Uh, out of a spray can, just to give the tree an overall kind of uniform colour of a browny grey. Once that's dry, you'll have something that looks like this, which I think you can agree looks like a pretty decent colour uh, for a tree and looks uh, a lot more realistic now that everything is painted the same colour. However, trees are a little bit more complicated when it comes to colour than they first appear. I'm going to be using some uh, light greys and some browns to dry brush onto the tree to give a slightly more kind of realistic look. First of all with the uh, light grey uh, it gives a kind of nice kind of overall coating. To this I'm going to be adding the brown paint. The brown is the next colour to go on and again using kind of a dry brush gives uh, a little more of a, a realistic shade. Make sure that when you're modelling trees, you take a look at what is uh, natural and follow that as closely as possible. And once you're done, you'll have something that looks like this. I'm very happy with the colour and also the shape of the tree. Looks a lot like my reference picture. Now we're ready to move on to the last stage, which is adding leaves. As I'm modelling winter or uh, late autumn, I was able to go out and pick up some dead leaves off the floor, some brown and yellows, which I then uh, put through a blender. The sieve mixture, um, I take out the big stuff and the very small stuff and I'm left with this that looks great for leaves. Using some firm hold hairspray, I'm going to use that to uh, supply the glue that the leaves are going to attach to. It's a simple case of just spraying the ends of the sea foam and then sprinkling the leaves from above. It's important that you, uh, I think, sprinkle them from above uh, and not just dump them into a container, just because you're going to get a more realistic and uh, natural look to the leaves. Once you sprinkle from above it's also important to turn the tree over and do the same from the bottom. Leaves do grow from uh, the top and the bottom of the tree so it's certainly well worth doing this if at all possible. In the end you'll have something that looks like this. This is perfect for a late autumn early winter tree. If you were modeling a different season you might have to add uh, more green leaves or even add some kind of thicker foliage or uh, rubberized horsehair to really kind of bulk out the tree. You don't want to go overboard, but you uh, certainly need a slightly thicker covering in the summer. I took the final step of adding some ivy uh, to the branch of the tree. Now, this is uh, quite common for a lot of trees in England, uh, but I thought uh, as a winter tree, uh, it, the color would be kind of brought in from 
the uh, ivy so that's what i've also done it's still wet at this point um i've given it a spray with the hairspray so it's got a bit of a sheen to it but once dry this uh, goes in that once you finish them you just need to multiply out by as many trees as you need for your layout as you can see once you put lots of them together you create a quite realistic uh, wooded area for your layout or obviously you can have them as individual trees once surrounded by uh, more in-depth scenery ground cover and bushes and things like that you'll have a great result for your layout that's pretty much it for this video thanks very much for joining me and i'll see you again very soon on st michael's hill bye bye <laughs>